Senator Simons. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In 1799, Joseph Lewis, an employee of the Hudson's Bay Company, arrived in what is now Alberta. He was 27 years old, but he'd already had a life of adventure. Born in 1772 in Manchester, New Hampshire, at the age of 20, he'd made his way to Montreal, where he joined the Northwest Company, the HBC's great rival. He was a Norwester for four years until he jumped ship, or perhaps I should say jumped canoe, and went to work for the Hudson's Bay Company. He signed a three-year contract as a steersman at a salary of 20 pounds a year and paddled and portaged his way west until he arrived in Alberta to help Peter Fiddler found Greenwich House, an HBC trading post near Lac La Biche. One other interesting thing about Joseph Lewis, he was black. When you picture voyageurs, I know you probably don't imagine them as Afro-Canadian, but black fur traders and explorers were very much a part of our history. The Northwest Company and the Hudson's Bay Company attracted adventurers from all over, young men of energy and ambition seeking fame and fortune. Records being scarce, we don't know whether Lewis was an escaped slave or a free man who was looking for a better life than the new United States could offer. But perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that he headed for the Western frontier, where he might hope to be judged by his abilities and not his race. In the summer of 1810, Lewis joined Joseph Howes on his expedition across the Rockies to the Columbia River. Joseph Lewis wasn't the first black man to cross the Continental Divide. That honor belongs to York, the Virginia slave who accompanied Lewis and Clark on their 1803 Pacific expedition. But Joseph Lewis belonged to no man. He crossed the Rockies strong and free, though slavery in the British Empire would not be abolished for another 30 years. When the Howes expedition returned to Edmonton House in July of 1811, they brought back a bounty of furs valued at 1,500 pounds and priceless intelligence about what they'd seen in the West. Now, Joseph Lewis wasn't the only black voyageur of his era. Stephen Bonga was a fur trader and interpreter who took part in the Bow River expedition. In, 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 1980, in 1822, he was the grandson of Michigan slaves. Glasgow Crawford, another HBC employee who was black, spoke English, French, and Iroquois, and worked as a cook and middleman at Fort Chippewan from 1818 to 1821. Mais Joseph Lewis a peut-être laissé l'héritage canadien le plus durable. Lui et sa femme autochtone, dont nous ignorons, hélas, les noms, ont eu deux filles et un fils qui ont ensuite rejoint la colonie de la Rivière Rouge pour faire partie de la nation métisse. As we mark Black History Month, let the story of Joseph Lewis remind us that black history is Canadian history and Alberta history too. <laughs>